Hello, welcome back. This is lesson four, process of editing fiction, copy editing level. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the actual work that needs to be done as a fiction editor. In depth, especially as a copy editor. Okay, now what you will learn, you will learn how to analyze a story's language and style and things to consider in a good fiction story, and how to craft engaging dialogues, balancing dialogues and narrative, maintaining style and tone and consistency among all the elements that makes for a good story. Now, as a copy editor, especially if you have identified that this is your core, welcome, 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 everyone, welcome. At the core of everything you would do with a story from the beginning to the end, there are three things you need to start with. First, you have to review the manuscripts in details. You have to conduct a thorough review of the manuscript you've been given, focusing on language and style. Next thing you need to do, which is the second, is to make suggestions and changes, just like everybody starts with, right? You have to make suggestions and changes after you have gone through in details. Now, you have to provide suggestions for how you want to rephrase certain things, restructure sentences, improve word choices, and all of that, and let your clients know. Then you get to work, which is this part of collaboration. Now, work closely with the author to discuss and implement the suggested changes. Okay? So that's the, the awesome step for every beginning of the work. Now, as a copy editor, the process you need to embark on starts with first, editing the dialogue. Ha <laughs> ha Yes. Start with dialogue editing. What do you look out for here? You look out for how to craft or how the author has crafted realistic and engaging dialogues or not. Okay? Now, because you're looking for or not, so that you know where to come in. Dialogues, of course, has to be realistic. They have to be true to life before they can make impact. Now, so let me give you four ways to make that happen for the author. You need realism in dialogues. <laughs> so if the author hasn't achieved it, you need to go ahead and do it. Now, because you need realism in dialogues, you have to employ what I call natural speech. You have to use the patterns of natural speech. Dialogue should mimic natural speech. It shouldn't be esoteric, yeah? You have to reflect how people speak in real life. You have to include interruptions. So people cannot just be making a speech and there's a character there who is not responding until they finish. That's not realistic. That's not how people discuss in real life, right? So you need to include interruptions in the dialogue. You need to also include contractions. It's not an OES member kind of dialogue, okay? It's not an OES member kind of dialogue. So there have to be contractions and there have to be colloquialisms. We need to hear them in patois. We need to, if there's, if that is certain, we need to hear pidgin English. We need to hear the kind of colloquialism that is consistent with the setting where the story is set. And the characters, each of them must have their own voices, just like real life characters, right? A character cannot be speaking a certain way and then start, them, start speaking like another character halfway. So you have to include natural speech patterns to make good dialogue there are three more i'm going to tell you that your dialogues need to have your character's voice each character should have a dixon voice that reflects where they are coming from as their background their upbringing that shows their personality and also their voice also have to show the role that they're playing in the story the third thing that has to happen for a dialogue to be natural is that there has to be a subtext dialogues often show more than what is spoken right your dialogue has to show more than what is spoken your dialogue doesn't have to have only speeches 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 subtext means include some implied meanings to what they say include their some emotional response that they give that tells more about what they mean include some underlining tensions that must be contained in your dialogues okay and also let your dialogues have a purpose don't just let them talk without it leading to somewhere. A dialogue must have a purpose why you are making a character say certain things. It has to lead to the plot development, of course, and also let us know more of the characters. The fourth element is purpose. Ensure that every line of dialogue serves a purpose. 
like I've already explained, it has to be advancing the plot line. It has to be relieved, revealing more about the character who is saying those things. It has to provide necessary information that can link up to the plot going forward. So how do you ensure that you have dialogues that are realistic? There are four things you can do. Listen to real people's conversations. Yes, I know I've said this somewhere before. Listen to real people's conversation and use that. Right? People who are in the setting that you're putting your, your characters in, that the story is set on, how they speak in real life. Observe and note it down that this is how people like this, my character, speak in various situations that they are in. Number two also, read aloud. When you're reading the dialogues aloud, it will help you to identify certain speeches that are natural or some awkward phrasing so you can better craft it and make it more realistic. The third thing you need to do to create a realistic dialogue is to use dialogue tags sparingly. What are dialogue tags? Things like he said, she said, she asked, they asked. Mm -mm. Because they can obstruct the flow of the communication and the ease with which it comes. Use action beats instead. Yeah, Use action beats and character actions to provide context and break up your dialogue so that you don't have to have dialogue tags. The final thing you need to do when you want to craft realistic dialogues is to avoid using overly formal languages. It's not true to type. It's not true to life. Unless a character's background justifies it to avoid using overly formal or over formal languages in dialogue. Mm -mm. Like I've said, except you said the character that has that idiosyncrasy, right? <laughs> um, to ensure that your dialogues in the story are engaging when you're editing edit for conflict and tension are there effective conflict and tensions because your dialogue should contain that yeah it reveals your character's motivations their fears their emotions are there conflict and tensions and how does it come into your dialogues very important now how do you also ensure Engaging dialogues. Edit for wit and humor. Incorporate wit and humor. You know, of course, in appropriate places so that you make your dialogues more engaging and relatable. More feel all right. Next thing. Edit for pacing. Ensure that dialogue flows naturally. And also, you have to maintain an appropriate pace for each of the scenes, right? So that, like we said before, that this, they are supposed to be varied scene lengths. Make sure that the pacing works with the scenes. Yeah? The, the final thing you need to ensure if you're going to create an engaging dialogue is don't tell too much. Show. So use all of these elements I mentioned. The context, the body language, plus what they are saying. Use dialogue to show character traits, the emotions, and relationships rather than telling the reader directly let the characters act in those ways let them act reluctant to show how they feel about a situation let them act with vigor in a certain situation let them not speak at certain times when they are expected to speak to show what's going on in their mind for instance show don't tell because a fiction copy editor is deeply focused on language style and tone you must ensure that the story balances dialogues with narrative very important because if your story is just dialogues all the way it will look like a play <laughs> yeah if you also have narratives all the way you will lose the interest of the reader so these are four things you need to consider take note there has to be this dialogue versus narrative perfectly balanced because that was keep the story dynamic and engaging and interesting too much dialogue can make the story feel like a script. Mm. While too much narrative can slow down the pace of the work. It will feel like it's dragging. I don't know what next they want to say, but it's dragging. Okay? Now, also use purposeful interjections. Yeah? Use narratives to provide um, information on the context, setting, describe certain actions, and develop the setting without overshadowing the dialogue, okay? So have those interjections where you use narratives to break into the dialogues. And I've given you the aspects where you can use the narrative to provide context and all that. 
Next thing you have to use is action bits. Integrate action bits within your dialogue so that you can break up the speech and provide additional context. Let them act as they speak so that we, from their actions, we can hear even more than what they have spoken. Because action bits include gestures, how they fling their hands, how they move, how they back the other people, how they sit, how they mourn, how they squeeze their faces, the movements they make, facial expressions, all of that are action bits. You have to include it in your dialogues so that they're not just talking and not doing. Now, the fourth aspect you need to consider when you're looking at whether your dialogue matches or balances with your narrative is what are the internal thoughts that your characters are having. You have to let us see. Use internal monologues. How they are speaking to themselves. How characters are making decisions about themselves or taking firm decisions about something. Use these internal monologues to give insight into a character's thoughts and feelings. Yeah, this will go a long way to complement the spoken dialogue, okay? All right, so I've told you how to balance that out, dialogue and narrative. Now, let's go to the next techniques. So, you want to make this happen, balance your dialogue with narratives. What will you be editing for? You're going to be analyzing the scene. As an editor, review every scene and ensure that there's a balance between dialogue and narrative. Uh, it must suit the pacing and the tone. That's your responsibility. You know how to do it now. So look out for them. Take scene by scene and review. So they can look out for these elements. How it balances and suit the pacing and the tone. The second technique you need to do, you have to edit for, is check out for variety in structure. Ensure that there is variation of structures of scenes, like I've said. Some longer, some shorter, and all of that. Alternate them. Uh, because you're looking at language, alternate between things that are heavy with dialogues and those that have descriptive passages. So alternate between dialogue heavy sections and more descriptive passages so that there will be a mix and a flow. Language is so important and style and tone, right? That is the second technique you need to edit for. Look at the scenes and mix it up. Let there not be a lot of dialogue heavy sections and there are no descriptions in between. Add some descriptive passages in between. The third technique to edit for is pacing. Edit for pacing. Adjust the amount of dialogues and narratives that are in certain places so that you can control the pacing of the story. That's how you actually make sure that the pacing of the story is balanced. Dialogues and narratives has to be controlled in the scene. Speeding up or slowing down as needed. Speeding up and slowing down as you go. Speeding up and slowing down as you go. Dialogues, narratives. Dialogues, narrative, descriptions, all of that. So there has to be scene analysis, analyze scenes, structure, variety, and of course, edit for pacing. Now, let's look at the another part that is the job of the copy editor. The tone the tone of your work how this story overall comes off how it sounds how it behaves how it feels so when you're done with dialogue like we have been looking at the next thing you need to consider is the style and the tone of this fiction narrative and you have to first ensure that you maintain the author's voice please Understand the author's voice. That's your first assignment, really. Because the author's voice is the unique style and the personality expressed throughout the writing. You can't remove this. The author's voice encompasses things like word choice, the kind of words they choose, the structure of the sentences, the rhythm, and of course the tone, the language style, the feelings that you feel when you're reading this work. And the author's voice has to be, must be consistent. You have to maintain a consistent voice throughout the manuscript. And it's very important because that's what makes the work coherent and helps the reader to become immersed in the work. Now, as a copy editor, there are three techniques you can use to ensure that the author's voice is maintained you have preserved this author's voice so that you don't go and 
in compassion. <laughs> you have to make sure that the author's voice is preserved. The first way to ensure that is to identify the major elements or the key elements. How do you do that? Determine the key elements of the author's voice. How do you do that? By analyzing the words that they choose. Yeah? The kind of choices of words they use. The length of the sentences that they chose to write with. And the overall style. How they, how they put their writing. Right? How their narrative comes up. How they have decided to write this book. You have to identify them, note them down, so that you don't sway, sway away from them at some point. Secondly, what you need to do is to respect originality of the author. Yes, make editing suggestions that enhance and, and um, clarifies the author's originality, original thoughts. Yes, so you can you have to provide clear and readable con content without altering the author's voice. I know why I'm emphasizing on this. The way the author uniquely expresses himself or herself is what makes this work original, and you must respect that. I see a lot of people even brag with, "Oh, they totally overhauled somebody's work," whatever that means. But please, when I hear it, I'm like, okay. I hope it's not overhaul in the sense of now the work sounds like you, the editor. You're not the author. You're the editor. <laughs> okay. Now, the third thing you must do to preserve the author's voice is, please, avoid over-editing. <laughs> yes. Avoid over-editing. A lot of editors over-edit. Edit lightly so that you can preserve the natural flow and the individuality of the author's writing. This author is different from every other, every other author in the world. Their writing is their signature, is their thumbprint, is their unique personality. That what sets them apart. Imagine somebody changing the way Jane Austen wrote. Oh gosh, I wouldn't have benefited from her awesomeness. <laughs> or maybe you pick up Emma, after reading Emma, when you're reading Sense and Sensibilities, which is like my best, you discover that she sounds a different way. Yeah? <laughs> also, you have to ensure that the appropriate tone is used according to the fiction subgenre of the manuscript. So, if this work is sci fi, if it's horror, if it's mystery, the tone of the work also have to depict it. So that means the next thing you have to edit for is the tone and subgenre alignment. Ensure that it aligns. Tone is the attitude or the emotional quality that is conveyed through the writing. So it must align with the fiction subgenre to meet your reader's expectations. Yeah? So if you are editing and you are ever editing, you will miss out. You will not even pay attention to the stop genre that this person is writing from. Now, there are different tones for different uh, sub -genres. So let me just run through maybe two or three. Uh, I expect you to do your research more. Different sub -genres require specific tones. Let me say like um, fantasy, for instance. It has to sound epic. It has to sound imaginative and very adventurous. So, your word choices has to have this element. You have to choose words that are adventurous, imaginative, epic. It has to be top of the mind, out of this world. <laughs> Romance, of course. Nobody should tell me this. Romance has to be emotional. Yeah? It has to be emotional. It has to be intimate. And it has to be hopeful because romance must end in a, an optimistic tone. It has to have hope. You don't use dirges, tr tragic kind of words in romance. No, 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 no. Don't kill that love, please. <laughs> you know, if somebody writes in horror, the choice of words has to be dark. It has to go you. It has to make you feel airy and, you know, like you're actually sitting with a ghost. You have to almost say, God forbid, in many places, but you have to use the words. You get... So imagine somebody writing mystery or trailer. Those sub genres have to be suspenseful. You have to feel like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? 
So there's always have to be tension. The words have to be tense. And there has to be urgency in the choice of words also. And that goes for all of them. Historical, it has to sound historic. It has to sound factual. You get? So let's move on. What are the techniques you can use to ensure that your tone is consistent in the story? You have to do some research here. Look at certain exemplary works that are within this subgenre. Study. Especially works that are successful within this subgenre. Please go and understand the typical tone and how they achieve theirs. Notes. There is no successful editor who does not read widely. Please, you have to look at other works. How did they do it? If you're editing a sci-fi, look at other sci-fi works. Read. What was their typical tone? How did they achieve it? What and what element did they use? Literature is about techniques. Techniques, techniques, techniques. Yes? So I tell people sometimes, when you run away from fiction, what you're saying is that you don't want to apply the techniques or you don't know them. It's about techniques. You can achieve a masterpiece. When you're done reading or writing it or editing it, even you will be shocked. you buy yourself something. <laughs> okay? So... The number one technique is I go and analyze other works, other successful works. Number two, check for emotional impact. Assess whether the tone effectively conveys the intended emotions and the atmosphere and settings of this work. You have to evaluate for that. Okay, don't over don't overlook it. Don't say, oh, it doesn't matter. Number three technique, ensure that the tone remains consistent throughout the manuscript. Consistency check, guys. Avoid abrupt shifts. Avoid in introducing tones that will shock the even the reader. <laughs> like you're like, ah, what's happening? Don't just change the tone of the work. It will disorient the reader. So by the time you look at other people's work, check for emotional impact and how it conveys and check for consistency and make sure that you don't shock them. You will be able to have mastered how to balance the tone of the work. If you apply these three as you edit for tone, there will definitely be consistency. While you're editing and you find out that the tone isn't consistent, here is what you have to do to adjust the tone to suit the narrative. So you have to edit in these three ways. Language choices. Look at the language choices and edit for them. Use language and vocabulary that is appropriate to the desired tone. Okay, look for how to use languages and the vocabulary that matches the tone that you desire. Example is like when you want to use a formal language, make sure that it is because you're writing a historical novel. Because more contemporary fiction and other, they, they just need you to use colloquial speeches that are real to the day of the characters. Another thing you have to edit for is the pacing and the structure. You see, so we'll come back here again. Make sure you adjust the pacing and the structure of the scenes to reinforce the intended tone that you want. Faster pacing, like we have said, can create urgency, while slower pacing can build tension or introspection. Yeah, edit also by using descriptive details. Select descriptive details that enhance the tone. Such as when you are describing something in horror, make sure that the languages are airy. It has to be scary. If it's a fantasy fiction, you know that you have to be vivid. You have to use real imageries. You have to use a lot of imageries. It has to be lush. <laughs> everything overflows. The sky, the cloud, everything is overflowing. Yeah? Copy editing is a defining stage in refining any manuscript, you know, and this because it focuses on language, style, and tone. But when you master dialogue editing and understand how to maintain the author's voice and ensure that there's appropriate tone for the genre or the subgenre that you're editing, you can significantly improve the readability and impact of your story. These skills you're acquiring will enable you to provide very important feedback and valuable ones that respects the author's intentions, even while you're doing your editing and enhancing the work overall, okay?
So it's activity time, it's action time. I have a manuscript for you. Download it below. I attached a manuscript excerpt. And this excerpt contains inconsistencies in style, language, tone. So go ahead and edit this passage, ensuring that there's consistent style and tone, of course, throughout the work. Um, check also, you'll see the corrected version so they can use for your self-assessment. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let me know when you're done, what your first work was before you go look at the self-assessment bit. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What we have learned. You have learned what a copy editor should ensure to make a good story and how they include language, style, and tone, right? You have also learned how to fix those issues in a fiction to make for a good story. Next, we are going to learn how to proofread a fiction the right way. Are you even ready? Go ahead and turn in your scripts if you're done in the group. And let's go to lesson five. See you on the other side.